Hello and welcome to lesson 21 of this introduction to probability of Wolframio. The topic for this lesson is mixture distributions. Let's begin. One question may have been on your mind for a very long time now. Why are we only analyzing distributions with a single peak? This seems oddly convenient and unrealistic. In fact, data distributions often have many peaks and weird shapes that you'd be unable to modelize with methods seen so far. This is where mixture distributions come in, extending probability distributions by weighting. Mixtures are very useful and easily interpretable. In this lesson, you'll see their different uses. The idea of mixture is usually best understood through the idea of subpopulation. Your data may often be the aggregation of contrasting smaller subpopulations, like mountain blueberries and plain blueberries, or natives and immigrants. Different realities may result in different probability distributions. Of course, for accurate representation, this requires the plotting to have a weight factor to account for the size of each subpopulation. For example, consider this plot of the weight of house pets. We expect the dogs and cats to have the most important peaks since they're the most popular house pets. And dog weight has a much greater variance among breeds, so the peak is lower and large than cats where the variance is much lower for weight. So how do you apply this? First, you can design your own complex mixture distributions from known characteristics of subpopulations as seen in this graph to a nuanced prediction of behavior of the total population as seen in this graph. For example, consider a poll in the United States saying female heights have an average of 64 inches and male heights have an average of 70 inches and all have a standard deviation of 2 inches. The ratio of females to males is 26 to 25. Assuming normally distributed height, what's the expected distribution? Well, take the mixture of 26 and 25 for normal distributions for females and males, and you'll get the general height distribution. To visualize, plot the distribution. As another example, consider this poll studying socioeconomic status. Lower class household incomes follow this Pareto distribution, while middle-class household incomes follow this normal distribution, and upper-class household income follows this gamma distribution. So what's the expected distribution? Well, take the mixture over the percentages of the Pareto, normal, and gamma distributions, and you'll get the general household income distribution. To visualize, plot the distribution. The second application is the opposite. Mixture distributions can allow you to reveal facts about unknown distributions. From a given data distribution with multiple peaks, you can extract different characteristics of the subpopulations. Keep in mind in practice, it may be very difficult to identify these subpopulations. This is closely related to clustering. You may be able to assess the orange and blue subpopulations, but not what they are in your application. Okay, for example, if you load consumer prices for rice and coffee, and you ask find distribution for a distribution, it will give back a mixture distribution. Just visualize with the estimated distribution next to the data distribution and you'll see coffee costs distinctly more than rice per kilogram, meaning using a bit of guessing and general knowledge, 
you were able to extract cell populations. But you may argue we cheated a bit, since we know the data extracted had two clear cell populations. Okay, then let's extract earthquake magnitudes recorded from 1960 and onward and plot the data in a histogram. Clearly, we see two peaks over the distribution, so we can assume two subpopulations. If you assume both are normally distributed, then you can estimate these distributions for a mixture distribution using estimated distribution. Plotting estimation against data shows a reasonable approximation. However, interpreting what these subpopulations are is impossible without in-depth geological knowledge. In machine learning, the most common of mixture distributions is the Gaussian mixture distribution, or GMMs for short. It's a machine learning method for soft clustering, meaning points are categorized with continuous degrees of certainty. A GMM is, at its core, a mixture distribution made of n multinormal random variables, as you can see in this graph. While one-dimensional cell population extraction can be often done with simple peak and slope analysis, multidimensional cell population extraction will likely require more powerful tools like GMMs. For example, for two dimensions on the Fisher Iris dataset, the Gaussian mixture can be learned and plotted along the data to show clear subpopulations. To summarize, mixture distributions are distributions incorporating several sub-distributions. This is useful for modeling distributions from smaller distributions, extracting sub-distributions from distributions, and soft clustering. Let's take a step back and analyze what was done. You've learned how to mix and transform multiple variables to make another variable of the same dimensionality. So, multiple variables of dimension n into a new variable of dimension n. But this is rather limiting yourself, since your initial dimension may not be the one you want to end up at. So to extend further, you'll have to consider making multivariate distributions from several univariate random variables.